Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Devin Adams. I'm a Fortinet certified trainer here in Tempe, Arizona for Dynamic Worldwide Training Consultants. And yeah, I do these videos for the participants who take my class and this is the third video? Third video, maybe? Anyways, in this demo, um, so uh, once again, we're, we're leading up to eventually getting our SD-WAN uh, up and running. Now, that's not special, so I've done that a thousand times. The SD-WAN is fantastic. It's where we can pretty much um, abstract a whole bunch of connections out to the Internet and make routing decisions on the fly based off of the quality of links. Um, there's a lot, a lot of really neat stuff there. So what I haven't done is I personally have not made it work with the VPN tunnels. So because the whole idea behind that is let's say that we had an MPLS connection between our headquarters and also our uh, uh, data center, right? We should be able to put that MPLS connection as a possible uh, path, right? And uh, also throw in VPN tunnels to go the long way back to the data center in case that MPLS network ever fails, or if even the quality of that link is shady. So, um, yeah, so that's my goal for this weekend, guys. I hope I get it done. So in the last video, we're just setting up the topologies, and we're also setting up the um, um, the interfaces, but we really haven't done anything to make traffic pass through. So uh, this is the first video that we're actually going to start doing things with the SD-WAN. Now, this was a previous demo that I did with passing WAN traffic, WAN traffic, or load balancing WAN traffic, and those rules are set up just fine on our headquarters for the gates. Uh, we need in this video, and we're going to keep it simple here because. My last two are way too long. Let's just simply get a SD-WAN connection going out from our data center and also out from our, our New York office over here, okay? Now, with the data center itself, I know you guys might be saying, well, maybe that's only a, a, an in-connection thing, like will we have publicly facing access out to the internet? Well, in our case, we will, all right? So we'll pretend like people are working in that data center office. So let's just go ahead and get a machine and uh, deploy it. So our goal is to get the SD-WAN up and running on those two. And I'm also going to show you guys that even if we have one circuit, if your FortiGate's just coming out of the box, there's really no reason not to use the SD-WAN um, even with one WAN circuit. And I'll show you why here. Did that even drop? Oh, it did. Now I have tons of them. So. And once again, just to justify my crappy videos, guys, I'm not a YouTuber. I am prompt to these. They're not rehearsed. So you're going to see me screwing up a lot. So here we go. So let's go ahead and... How did that happen? I just closed GNS3 by accident. Just a sec. All right, sorry about that, guys. My GNS3 crashed. That actually hasn't happened in a long time. So had to power all my devices back up. Sorry about that weird delay. Anyways, okay. So... um. Anyways, getting back into my, my focus here. So uh, the goal of this video, I might have already said it, but uh, we're simply going to make SD-WAN connections for the DC and the NYC office. Okay, and I'm going to show you guys how you can use a single circuit just to kind of future-proof it. And uh, that's the beauty of it, right? We can just throw circuits at it down the road later on. It should just work. Uh, and then we're also going to secure the WAN interfaces of our devices because you know what? Um, in reality, we should not have any administration access to our publicly facing interfaces. So anyways, um, so let's get this TerraTerm box loaded up into our DC office so we can start uh, doing administration from it. So here we go. And then I'm just going to call this, I think we're up to like PC4 now or something like that. And I like to change the icon just to be silly. So here we go. Change symbol. All right, I'll give this uh, I'll give this a penguin box. Here we go. Good old Tux the penguin. Okay, so and we'll boot that bad boy up after we configure it for DHCP because I'm pretty sure we put DHCP on these interfaces. So here we go. And all we got to do is take out these two hashes. So and uh, yeah, I got to take it off screen because my resolution. Okay, hit apply. Hit okay. And let's see if we can't get 
to our DC 48. So while that's booting up, I'm just going to do a double check on my interface that's pointing towards the um, config system interface, pointing towards our internal network and see what kind of access is on there. Okay. Nope, that's our point to point. Okay, that was weird. Did we never make an interface IP address? Oh, there it is. Jeez, it was port four. All right, you guys see how there's only ping access that's allowed on port four? Okay, uh, we're going to change that so we can actually get to the FortiGate from the DC side. So we're going to do an edit port four. We're going to set. I don't know why I keep hitting that X. We're going to set allow access, and this is the administration protocols that are allowed. We'll ping the interface, but we'll also allow HTTP, HTTPS, and that's only because we're in a lab environment, and SSH. So commit, and now we should be able to get to the, the DC's page here. So here we go. Let's try it out. 10. Dot ten dot two dot two five four. All right, perfect. And yes, we haven't set up any of our certificate authorities. So here we go. So let's go ahead and log in and let's go ahead and set up that SD WAN interface. And this is why I didn't want to put any of the interfaces in or any of the routes in ahead of time because, uh, in order to join an interface to the SD WAN we are going to need our, um, our uh, interfaces and our routes not to be referenced anywhere in the active firewall. So, uh, but let's go ahead and do it. So let's go to our network. Let's go to SD-WAN. We're gonna toggle it on, okay? And I purposely only left one interface member. Here we go. See how we only have one WAN, one, okay? And the gateway is gonna be the next hop, and that would be our other side of our, you know, terminating connection to the internet service provider. So whatever IP address they give us, uh, we're going to use that default gateway for for that connection. So in our case, it's going to be 10.200.6.254. Okay. So if you read anything documentation-wise on the FortiGate about um, the SD-WAN, they say that you always need two interfaces. Well, yeah, technically, because there's really no point of having an SD-WAN without two interfaces, because the whole point of it is to load balance and to uh, actively, you know, point traffic around the uh, down the right, the right pipe. But like I was saying, this is going to future-proof our FortiGate down the road in case we want to throw more circuits at it, to throw more WAN connections at it, okay? Um and also, in the next video, my only goal is to get MPLS failover to work on this thing. So, all right, before we even touch the VPN connections. But, all right, so once we got that going, okay, we are going to then uh, write our default gateway, okay, because we still need the static route for that. So we're going to say, hey, you know what? If you want to leave for the Internet, Instead of WAN 1, because remember, we wrote that when we were configuring it from the WAN side. I want you to use the SD-WAN instead. Okay. And now it's going to be able to push traffic out that SD-WAN logical interface. All right. Now, after that, I'm going to go into something else here. Now, the performance SLAs, I'll get into way more detail of that later on down the road okay um, but that's essentially how we can uh, measure the performance of our of our links going out to the internet and i'm going to create one anyways even though i only have one participant and the reason why is because like i said not only is this to future proof the fortigate if we ever want more circuits but guys i think it's a good idea to have a measurement of the latency, packet loss, and jitter that's going out to the internet anyways. This way, if there is a problem with your uh, internet connection, you can even get notified beforehand, contact your ISP, and you don't have to wait till end users start complaining about uh, traffic going bad. So here we go. We're just gonna call it a, a QoS internet, and we're gonna borrow Google's DNS server here, okay? 
and then the participants is just going to be our, our WAN1. We're not going to set an SLA target, but that's okay because we don't need to at this point. Because check this out, guys. We'll still have that, that, um, that statistics there, okay? And that is changing. I mean, if I hit F5 here, it should change, and it updates ever so often. And this way, we can at least keep an eye out on our internet connection. I don't know what happened with the back of loss there. So, uh, but still, I, I personally think that's pretty cool. And also, you're going to see um, down the road, too, where in uh, 6.2, which I'll do a separate video on, they're even improving uh, the measurement quality of these things. Now there's like a historical graph that's kind of neat. So, all right, let's go ahead and throw this on a on a policy so we can get we can get internet traffic because right now nothing is getting through. So uh, let's just go ahead and say okay. We'll just call this a uh, uh, internet access. Our incoming is going to be our LAN port. Our outgoing is going to be our SD WAN. All right, our source. Now, if you're working with the FortiGate, it is much easier to use uh, objects. So we're going to create a new object here. And this is going to be the subnet mask of our um, of our DC traffic. So we're going to just call this DC uh, subnet. OK. And for me personally, I like to tag them with colors. Green means that they're a trusted IP address, a private trusted IP address. All right. And our subnet's going to be 10.10.20 with a slash 24. And just because I might want to reference this somewhere else, I'm going to just say any for right now. Um, I'm going to hit OK. And actually, you know what? Just for down the road, I'm also going to make this available if I ever need to write a static route to it. All right. So there we go. So we're going to say anything that is going to the DC, coming from the DC subnet and going out to, well, the internet's a big place. So we're just going to say all. Okay. And for right now, I don't care about services. And oops, I hit okay too fast, but I was just going to show you guys that we're not scanning for any security features for right now and I did include NAT. Now the default NAT is going to be using the default IP address on the uh, interfaces that are leaving the internet and in our case it's just the WAN 1 traffic. Okay so then we come up here and we now should be able to go to google.com just like normal and we did. Ta-da! We got internet access. Yay! Okay so and we did that using the SD WAN. So even though the SD-WAN is not doing anything special now, it definitely will be if I don't screw up this demo by the end of it. So uh, we can also go down to our um, SD-WAN monitor, and you can actually see the utilization upstream, downstream. Of course, nothing's happening right now. But when you get multiple circuits in there, it's nice to see the traffic being distributed. So, okay, let's go ahead and tackle the branch office. All right. So here we are in New York City. Let's go ahead and log in. All right. I promise I'll change that password one of these days. All right, here we go. And we're going to do the same thing. We are going to go to our network. And the whole reason why we're doing this, once again, is just to future-proof it down the road. So let's go ahead and go to network. Let's go to our SD-WAN. We are going to kick it on. And we're only going to have one member at this point, which is going to be our WAN1. And then it's we're going to have a 10.200.7.254. All right. And there we go. That's all we needed. OK. And then, like I said, it's nice to have a measurement for some quality. And I'll explain SLAs maybe some other time. So. Uh, but let's go ahead and go to performance SLAs and just do that ping out to Google again if it doesn't lock itself up here. Come on, buddy. Here we go. So we'll just say uh, QoS Internet, borrow Google's DNS, participants. We only have one connection at the moment. Not going to hit a target because we're not using it to write any rules. We're going to hit OK. And now we should have that 
performance. All right, so pretty darn fancy. All right, let's go ahead and write the firewall rule just like normal. So let's go, actually, no, I lied. What are we missing? We need to have the default gateway. So static route, there we go. We're gonna change that to our SD-WAN. And the reason why the, uh, the next hop disappears, guys, is because it's defined on the SD-WAN itself. And also the SD-WAN daemon process, whatever you're gonna see when you use it in real life, it's constantly measuring for quality, constantly measuring for conditions, and rewriting routes as needed as policy routes. So, all right, here we go. Now that we have that going on, we're going to come down to our um, firewall policies. All right, so we're gonna create a new firewall policy and we're just gonna call this internet access. Uh, internet access coming into our LAN, going out our SD WAN. Our source, once again, we're going to make an address object. And I'm just going to call this NYC subnet. Ten ten three zero with a slash twenty four. Use on any interface because we might have to push that down VPN traffic someday or something like that. And also static if we need it. So, all right. I love that you can color code them now. It just makes it easy visual. Okay, that's a trusted private IP address. All right. Uh, Internet's a big place, so we'll say all uh, services. Right now, we'll just say all, and then. That's okay. All right, cool. So, and in all theory, we should be able to get out to the internet now. So let's, let's give it a shot. So, all right, and there we go. So guys, both of our FortiGates are now using the SD-WAN, only one connection. But like I said, that's gonna make it a whole lot easier down the road when we start throwing circuits at it. And on top of that, uh, we can also use it for our MPLS. We can also use it for our SD-WAN VPN connections because we might have redundant tunnels. Because remember, our headquarters does have four different, one, two, three, four different uh, ISPs and four different public IP addresses. So, you know, I'm really going to try to make this as complex as possible because, like I said, I personally couldn't uh, just wing it. Uh, when I was doing it in my labs last week, and uh, I want to make sure we understand this. So we as in like the royal we, <laughs> my multiple personalities. Uh, but before we go, okay, and once again, this turned out to be way too long. I apologize, guys. I want to make sure now that we have access from the inside out uh, to turn off any administration access to the FortiGates on our WAN-facing interfaces. So I'm just going to go in here on my, my port 1. And I'm just doing this to add to the whole, like, okay, what is it realistically going to feel like in the real world? You cannot get to the FortiGates webpage. You cannot SSH to it. You cannot ping it. And you do not have FortiManager access internet facing. All right? So we just secured our, our WAN facing interface of our FortiGates on our New York side. All right? Same thing with the DC one down here. We don't want those. We don't want those facing. So we're going to go to uh, interfaces. We're going to go to our WAN connections. All right. So here we go. And let's turn off administration access. See, look at that. Boo. I did that just to make it easier to set it up. But in reality, we don't want those things internet facing. So, all right. And then, just for completeness, let's just do a very quick verification of those on our headquarters side. So let's log into our PC here. Um, all right. Oh, so slow. All right, here we go. And then let's go to our FortiGate. And of course, we can get to our headquarters FortiGate, but because we turned off all those access to the other ones, guys, see how we can't get to the to the DC one now? And we should not be able to get to the uh, 
actually that was the DC. That was the New York one. This is the DC one. We turned off those interfaces, so we can't get there using public IP addresses anymore. And that's how it should be. So, all right, but well, let's log in. Oh, that's right. I'm using LDAP. All right, here we go. Um, did that on a different. Ooh, is my domain controller down? Nope. I just type like an idiot. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. So, and let's just check our, our interfaces going out to the internet here, just for completeness. So, if you guys notice, I did upgrade to the latest version too. I'll probably do that off camera for the other ones that I deployed now that they're licensed. But let's go to interfaces. All right. And uh, WAN 1, WAN 2, WAN 2. That is so weird, by the way. So I made a uh, dial-in connection using the wizard, even though the SD-WAN was utilized. And I didn't realize that it would do that. It actually references the WAN right here and the WAN underneath the SD-WAN. So that is brand new. So I'll have to talk about that a little bit later. But I just want to come over here and make sure that we don't have any of our access turned on. And it looks like we don't so that's a good thing so um just to make sure it'd be nice and secure so all right guys so there you go we set up sd wan using a single connection to kind of future proof our forty gates to make it easier to add circuits down the road also we can utilize that sd wan for things like vpn connections and also mpls right outside of wan connections and that's going to be the next set of videos and we also took a quick look on our wan facing interfaces to make sure that there, there was no administration access that was publicly facing so all right i'll try to record a couple more like i said my goal is to get this done before the weekend's out so uh, i also apologize about if if you guys get notified a bunch about videos updating but um yeah i'll just make sure that it happens so all right guys thanks a lot and i'll see you in a little bit so...